Hi, welcome to Yoga Glady in the Attic Yoga Space. So I'd like to guide you through a session which is entitled Yoga for Beginners. And for this session you will need some kind of cushion and a strap. So it could be a scarf or a dressing gown belt or anything at all. Or if you have a yoga strap then take that one. So if you just have that next to you. And then maybe take your cushion and sit onto it. So we're going to start in Sukhasana. Sitting cross-legged. And just snuggle your sit bones down to the ground, lengthen all the way up to the crown of the head. Lift the shoulders up to the ears and then roll them back and down. And before we begin, I'd just like to remind you to work lovingly and kindly with your body. So don't do anything that doesn't feel good. If you're working with injuries today, don't push into any pain. And I like to encourage people to really enjoy being in their bodies and to enjoy their yoga practice. So let's start here in Sukhasana. And we'll just take a breath in through the nose and then exhale through the mouth and feel the body becoming relaxed, really arriving in your physical body, arriving in this moment. So as I'm filming right now, you might be able to hear the rain pattering down. It sounds quite nice actually. It's pouring with rain in Bristol. Let's bring the hands together. So this is not only the gesture of love and gratitude, but it's also uniting both sides of the body and the brain. So it's centering. On your inhalation, reach your arms up. And then as you exhale, take your elbows wide, spread your fingers and then glide the shoulder blades down the back. Bring the hands together, breathing in, reaching up, and then breathing out and reaching wide and down. Bring the hands together, breathing in, reaching up, and then breathing out, reaching wide and down. And then bring your hands onto your knees. And let's just drop the right ear towards the right shoulder. So let go of the head, keep it heavy and relaxed, and then reach into the left arm, lightly touching fingertips to the ground. So you'll feel a nice stretch down the left side of the neck, maybe down the arm, right down into the hand. Bring your awareness to your breath, and then just breathe in and out through the nose, keeping the breath calm and rhythmic. Good. And then inhale your head back through to centre, and drop the left ear towards the left shoulder and reach into the right arm, lightly touching fingertips to the ground. And directing your breath into any areas of sensation. Okay, and then inhale, coming back through to centre and let's just drop the chin to the chest, stretching out the back of the neck. And then inhale the head up and turn your face up towards the ceiling, opening up the throat area and then come back through to centre. Reach the arms out in front of you and then circle through your wrists. So these subtle movements are just really useful for keeping the joints nicely lubricated. And a lot of us do a lot of fine finger work on our devices and computers and laptops and all of that these days. So it's important to do these exercises. We can bring that movement into the elbow joints and then bring the hands onto the shoulders, thumbs back, fingers forward and circle the shoulders, inhaling elbows forward and up, exhaling back and down, inhaling forwards and up, exhale back and down, inhaling, exhaling, inhaling and exhaling. So we're synchronising movement with breath. Let's bring the hands down to the ground now. And then just walk your right hand away from you along the mat and reach up with your left arm. And you can turn your chest up towards the sky. So we're looking for a nice stretch along the left side of the body, breathing into that. And then coming back through to centre and bringing the left hands down and reaching up with the right arm. And then coming back through to centre, bringing your right hand onto your left knee and your left hand's behind you, so you can come onto your fingertips behind you, and then inhale, lengthen up through that vertical central line, the spine, all the way up to the crown of the head, 
And then as you exhale, you're just gently turning over to the left. So if you have any lower back issues, just be mindful of not pushing into anything that doesn't feel good. And you can work more on the upper back, that space at the back of the heart, the space between the shoulders. Good, and then come back through to centre and bring your left hand onto your right knee and your right hand's behind you. And inhale as you lengthen upwards and then exhale as you turn over to the right. Good, and then come back through to centre and let's take a forward fold here. So we're going to bring the hands onto the ground, come into your fingertips. Inhale, lengthen the spine and then as you exhale, start to walk your fingertips forward. And you might drop your chin to your chest and just be here. Or you might come onto your elbows and your forearms. It doesn't matter where you come to. You're just allowing gravity combined with the breath to take you into this forward fold. It might be that your hands reach all the way forward and then the head rests down to the ground. But there's no forcing. Good. And then walk your hands gently in towards you, coming up. And then from here, we're going to come onto our hands and knees. So we're coming onto all fours. You might move your cushion to one side now. Have your knees under your hips. Have the heels of the hands under the shoulders. Spread your fingers nice and wide. You can tuck the toes under. And then just swoop your body forward. And then back. Inhaling forward. And exhaling back. And then come back to the middle, shoulders over the heels of the hands, hips over the knees. Inhale as you lift your heart and lift your tailbone, so you're extending the spine and looking forwards. And then as you exhale, draw the navel towards the spine, drop the chin to the chest and lift up that space at the back of the heart. Inhale as you extend the spine, look forwards. Exhale, arch back. Inhale, lift your heart, lift the tailbone. Exhale, arch back. So this movement is just really nice for keeping your spine nice and supple. And gently working the muscles in the back and the core. So we're just waking up those muscles. Good. And then coming back to a neutral position. Sliding your right leg back, coming onto the ball of your right foot, reaching into the heel. And then identifying your left arm, reaching the left arm forward, and then raising the right leg. So it's opposite arm to leg reaching. If that feels too strong, just come onto the ball of your right foot and stay there instead. Let's just take a, th a few breaths here. So we're breathing in through the nose and out through the nose. The breath is smooth and steady. And then bringing the left hands down and the right knee down. And then bringing your left leg back. Come onto the ball of the foot, reach the right arm forward and then maybe raise that back leg, opposite arm to leg, reaching. So there's a line of energy from your right hand to your left heel. Good, and then bring your right hands down and your left knee down. Now we're going to take the knees wide, bring the big toes together, and then sink your thumb down onto your heels and reach the arms forward. So this is called a child's pose or a balasana. In Sanskrit, and we're lengthening through the spine. And we're bringing the breath into the back body. So see if you can feel the movement of your breath. See if you can feel the breath moving all the way down to the lower back. Imagine the breath moving into the spaces between your vertebrae. And then bring the breath all the way up to the back of the heart. Good, and then from here, plant your hands to the ground and spread the fingers out nice and wide. We're going to make our way into a down dog pose now. So we're going to bring the knees under the hips and then tuck the toes and lift up the hips, coming into down dog. Adha Mukha Svanasana. We're softening the chest in towards the thighs. And the hands and the feet are evenly down on the ground. So if you have any lower back issues, you might need to bend your knees. That's fine. You always bend your knees. And you want to feel the weight of your body distributed through the hands and the feet, as if you had four feet. If 
your head a little shake, a little nod, you're looking towards the back of your mat or between the knees. Good, and then from here we're going to walk the hands in towards the feet and come into a forward fold. So this posture is called Uttanasana. The feet are about hip width apart. You, again, you can bend your knees, especially if you've got any lower back issues, and just let the weight of your body cascade down over the legs. So the weight of the body feels like a waterfall cascading down. And again, you might like to shake out your shoulders, your head, your neck, bring in a little bit of movement. And then press down into your feet and slowly make your way up to standing, stacking one vertebrae onto another, coming all the way up to standing so that you arrive on your feet in the mountain pose or tadasana. Feet are about hip width apart, the heels are under the hips. And then let's just turn the palms to face forward. Connect to the breath. You might close your eyes and scan through your body. Feel your feet on the ground and the crown of the head reaching up and become aware of your body in space. Good. So now I'm going to take you through a sun salutation. And we're going to do it really slowly. We're just going to do one today. So this is called Surya Namaskar, salutation to the sun. So we're going to come to the front of the mat. You can have your feet together or hip width apart. It's up to you. Bring your hands together in Anjali Mudra. Breathe in through your nose and then exhale through your mouth. Inhale through the nose and then this time exhale through the nose but feel the breath in the back of the throat. Inhaling nose, exhaling nose. This is called Ujjayi breath which means the ocean breath or the victorious breath. So we inhale through the nose and exhale through the nose. On your next inhalation, reach your arms up. And then as you exhale, fold yourself in half and bend your knees if you need to. So remember, if you've got any lower back issues, just bend your knees. Bring your hands onto your shins. Lift your chest, drawing the navel to the spine. Exhale, bend your knees, plant your hands. Step your right foot and your left foot back, coming into a plank pose. Now, if this feels too strong for you, just drop down onto your knees. You don't have to hold plank. Some people like holding plank though. So this increases your core strength. It, it brings a little bit of heat into the body. From here, let's drop down onto the knees and then lower the whole body all the way down to the ground. Now we're gonna slide the arms forward and bring the elbows under the shoulders so the forearms are parallel. You can just check that the elbows are exactly under the shoulders. And then press down into all 10 of your toenails. You might turn the knees in a little bit so the backs of the thighs are broad and then lift your heart forward and up. So you're lengthening the spine out of the pelvis and lifting your heart through the gateway of the arms. And then hugging shoulder blades into the upper back and broadening across the collarbones. Bring your awareness back to your breath, breathing in. And as you breathe out, just press your toes down a little bit more Inhaling, lengthening the spine. Exhaling, heart lifts forward. Good, so you can either stay here for a couple more breaths. If your back feels fine, turn your fingertips out, press into your hands and then lift the elbows and what you'll find is that you lengthen and open the front side of your body even more. If that hurts your lower back, just come back into the previous version. Deep breath in here. And then as you breathe out, slowly lower down and bring your hands under your shoulders, tuck your toes, lift up your hips, spreading your fingers nice and wide. So we're coming back into our down dog pose and finding that place of balance where you feel the hands and the feet evenly connecting down to the ground. Bend your knees if you need to. Your heels don't have to come down to the ground, they can be lifted they might just naturally drop down to the ground. So everybody's different and you do what works for you. Breathing in, bend your knees, look forward, step the right foot and the left foot forward. Bring the hands on the shins, lifting chest. Exhale, folding forward. 
press down into your feet. Inhale the arms up, all the way up, and then bring your hands back to your heart. And then release the arms down. And again, if you come back into Tadasana, the mountain pose, feel all four corners of your feet connecting to the earth. Lift the shoulders up, roll them back and down. Have your palms facing forward. Connect to the vertical line of energy that runs through the, the central line of the body. You might close your eyes, scan through your body, and just notice the effects of Surya Namaskar, the sun salutation. Good. And then the next posture is Trikonasana. So this is the triangle pose. We're going to have the right foot forward and then left foot back. So the alignment in this posture is quite important. You want to line up your right heel with your left instep. And your hips are turned so that they face the long end of the mat. And then you're opening up through your arms, finding a beautiful horizontal line of energy through the arms, reaching right into the fingertips. And then let's just lift up and spread the toes. And when you do that, you might notice the muscles in your legs engaging. Now place the toes down, but keep that energy in your legs. Turn the right palm up, reach up. Bring the left hands down the back of the left leg. Then come back through to center. Reach and lengthen both sides of the torso. And then just let your right hand drop somewhere onto your right leg. So there's no hurry to get your hand all the way down to the ground or anything like that. We just want to draw that left hip and left shoulder up and back. And you can either look down towards your right big toe or you can look straight ahead, or you can look up to your left thumb. Feel your body in space. And feel the space all around you. And then reach into the top arm coming up. And then turn your feet. We'll take it to the other side. So we've got a perfect equilateral triangle between the legs. And then we're turning left palm up and reaching up and bringing the right hand down the back of the right leg. Come back through to centre, reach and lengthen, and then let the left hand drop down onto the left leg and reach up with the right arm, with the right hip up and back. Stay with your breath. Good, and then reach into the top arm, coming up. Release the arms. Good, let's swivel on the heels again. Turning over to the right. And then this time we're going to take a warrior pose. So this is a warrior two, Virabhadrasana two. So now we're going to bend the right knee and then straighten the leg. Bend the right knee, straighten the leg. And then bend the right knee. You might just slide that right foot forward a couple of inches and stack your right knee exactly over your right heel. So the way to check your alignment here is to line up the tip of your right kneecap with your second toenail and then really lengthen that right inner thigh and then press well into the outer edge of your back foot. The outer edge of your back foot is parallel to the back of your mat. You're reaching through the arms, looking out over your middle finger. Feel that beautiful line of energy moving through your arms. And now turn the right palm up and reach up and bring the left hand down the back of the left leg. So this is a dancing warrior. Come back through into warrior two. And then bring your right elbow onto your right thigh. And as you do that, reach the left arm up. So now we're in a side angle pose. Reaching straight up. And again, you can either look straight ahead or you can look up to your thumb. Drawing that left hip, left shoulder up and back. But staying really grounded through your feet. Inhale, coming up. Straighten up that right leg. Release the arms. And then again, swivel on your heels. Open up through the arms, breathing in. And as you breathe out, bend your left knee. Inhale, straightening the leg. Exhale, bend the knee. Just slide the foot forward a little bit. Inhale, straightening up that left leg. And then exhale, bend the knee. And then check that your knee is exactly over your heel and that the knee is not collapsing inwards like that. So you're really activating your inner thigh muscles there. And then turn the left palm up and reach up and bring the right hand down the back of the right leg. Come back through to centre and then bring left elbow onto the left thigh. Reach straight up with the right arm. Good. Take a few breaths here and then reach into your top arm coming up. Straighten the left leg. Release the arms. Good. And then turn your left toes in. 
Now we're going to take a forward fold. Prasarita Padottanasana, a wide-legged forward fold. So the outer edges of the feet are parallel. Bring the hands onto your waist. Inhale, lift the chest. As you exhale, lead with your heart and hinge at the hips and then start to fold forward. So if you have tight hamstrings, again, you can bend your knees. We're bringing the hands onto the ground, under the shoulders, and then inhaling and lifting the chest, looking forwards. And then as you exhale, start to walk your hands back and fold in. So the fingertips might line up with the toes, the forearms are parallel, and then the crown of the head moves down towards the ground. Stay with your breath. Keep it smooth and steady. Good. and then bring the hands to the waist, press down into your feet, inhaling all the way up and then heel toe your feet in. So the next one we're going to do is the Vrikshasana, the tree pose. This is a balance and balances are very grounding and also really good for anxiety because you kind of have to focus and really bring your awareness into the present moment in order to balance, in order to hold balance. So we're going to ground down through the left foot, bring the hands to the waist, pick up the right knee and then take it out to the side and then bring the sole of your foot into position. So if you're really new to yoga, you might just keep your toes down on the ground and rest the heel to the inner ankle or you might bring the sole of the foot just below the knee, not on the knee joint. Or if you've done yoga before and you want to, you can bring the sole of the foot all the way up to your inner thigh, in which case you're gripping your left outer thigh into the sole of the foot so that you have a two-way gripping action. And then bring the hands to the heart. Fix your gaze to a still point. That really helps with balance. And try not to think about anything. And then reach the arms up. Connect to the vertical line of energy that runs through the midline of your body. Good. And then from here, if you like, you can open up through your arms. But you don't need to do that. You can just keep the hands together. Brilliant. And then bring your hands back to your heart and bring your right knee forward, release the leg down, drop the weight into your right foot now, pick up your left knee and then take that left leg out to the side and bring the sole of the foot into position, same as you did on the other side. Try to level off the hips, have the shoulders stacked exactly over the hips and you can take the knee as wide as you like, bring the hands to the heart, fix your gaze to that still point, reach the arms up Staying really grounded through the right leg and maybe opening up through the arms. Good, and then bring the hands back together and to the heart. Bring your right knee forward and then bring the foot down. Great. So now we're going to take the feet out to the sides, toes out, heels in. Feet are slightly wider than your hips. Feet are about 45 degrees, bring the hands together, breathe in, and then as you breathe out, come down into a squat. See if you can take the arms inside the knees and then press the knees into the arms. If this is really not comfortable for you, you can be on the balls of your feet. Don't worry, we're not going to hold it for too long. We're drawing the thumbs in towards the breastbone, connecting to the breath. Good, and then bringing the hands behind and sitting down and then bringing the soles of the feet together. You might want to sit onto your cushion again now. So this posture is called Baddha Konasana, bound angle pose. Let's take the hands around the feet, press the heels in, press the outer edges of the feet in, and then lengthen the inner thighs and lengthen up through the spine. And connect to your breath. You can close your eyes if you like and internalise the experience. It's up to you. Good. And then from here, let's slide the left leg forward and bring the sole of the right foot to your left inner thigh or somewhere along the inside of your left leg. This is where you might need your yoga strap. We're going to take a forward fold. The arms reach up and then the heart reaches forward and then the Yoga strap, if you're using the yoga strap, can come around the ball of your left foot. If you can easily reach your left foot without the strap, then you can do that. Breathe in and lengthen, and then as you breathe out, fold in. Try and have the shoulders parallel, the heart space open, 
and both sit bones evenly connecting to the earth. And then inhale the arms up, bring the hands down. Let's slide the right leg forward, and bring the sole of the left foot in. Inhale the arms up, exhale the heart forward, using your strap, folding in, or bringing the hands around the foot. So this posture stretches out the hamstrings and the calf muscle. This is Janu Sirshasana. Inhale the arms up, release the hands down. And then from here, if you transition onto one side and then onto your back and line up your heels with your sit bones so that you can tickle the backs of your heels, take a breath in through your nose. As you breathe out, press down into your feet, lift the tailbone and then start to lift up through the spine. Try and keep the knees in line with the hips. This posture is called Setu Bandhasana or bridge pose, and we're just gently engaging the glutes to lift the pelvis and have a sense of drawing the knees away from the body and the chest towards the chin, lifting, lengthening, stay with your breath, and then when you're ready, slowly lower down onto your back, and then just slide your legs away along the mat, let your Arms come out to the sides. Bring your awareness to the soles of your feet. Completely release and relax all the muscles in your feet, your heels, your ankles, calves and your shins. The fronts and the backs of the knees, fronts and backs of thighs. Soften your buttocks. Release the lower back, middle back and upper back. Let the shoulders roll downwards and outwards. Tops of the arms, elbows, forearms, wrists, hands, fingers, fingertips. Back of the neck, back of the head, crown of the head, the forehead, the eyes, cheeks, nose, mouth, tongue, chin, jaw, throat, chest, navel and abdomen. The whole body completely relaxed. Feel your breath, feel your body being breathed and allow yourself to sink into a place of rest and relaxation. Good. And then starting to deepen your breath. Imagine that you're breathing all the way down into your fingertips and your toes and start to wiggle the fingers, wiggle the toes, stretch out your arms, stretch out your legs. And then bring your knees in towards your chest and roll onto one side. Use your hands to help you come up to a comfortable seated position. So coming back into Sukhasana, sit bones snuggling down to the ground, lengthening up to the crown of the head and then just bringing left hand to the heart and the right hand to your belly. Breathing all the way down into your belly, feeling your belly expanding on the inhalation. And then bringing your right hand to meet the left hand in the gesture of love and gratitude, and lifting your heart to your hands. And that's it. Thank you for sharing this practice.